Welcome to the lecture on linear correlation and regression. This topic is covered in Chapter 18 of Clear-Sighted Statistics. This lecture has nine objectives. One, you understand the difference between independent variables, x, and dependent variables, y. Two, you will learn how to interpret scattergrams. Scattergrams are also called scatter diagrams. Three, the calculation and interpretation of the coefficient of correlation, or R, will be reviewed. This calculation will be performed by hand and with Microsoft Excel. Four, positive and negative, or inverse, correlations will be defined. Five, the calculation and interpretation of the coefficient of determination, or R square, will be explained. This calculation will be performed by hand and with Microsoft Excel. 6. The significance of a correlation will be tested. 7. The difference between correlation and causation will be discussed. 8. Spurious correlations and confounding variables will be explained. 9. A linear regression analysis will be conducted. Let's distinguish correlation from regression. Correlation measures the strength of the association between the independent variable x and the dependent variable y. Regression predicts the dependent variable y based on the independent variable x using the regression equation. Now let's discuss the independent and dependent variables. The independent variable, or x, is the predictor variable. Independent variables are quantitative variables. The dependent variable, or y, is the response variable. It responds to changes in the independent variable. Dependent variables are quantitative variables. Let's distinguish linear correlation regression from multiple correlation and regression. Linear correlation and regression uses one independent variable and one dependent variable. Multiple correlation and regression uses multiple independent variables and one dependent variable. Multiple correlation and regression models are far more sophisticated than linear correlation and regression models. Most peer-reviewed journals do not publish research based on linear correlation and regression. There are six requirements for linear correlation and regression. One, the independent and dependent variables are quantitative and continuous. Two, the correlated data should approximate a normal distribution. Three, there is a linear relationship between the independent and dependent variables. Four, when this relationship is not linear, the data for one or both variables may have to be transformed. Five, the variance around the regression line should be homeoscedatic, which means roughly equal for all values predicted by the independent variable x. Six, Outliers can distort the correlation. All data should be within plus or minus 3.29 standard deviations from the mean. A scattergram, or scatter diagram, is an XY chart. Each dot shows the value of the paired independent variable and dependent variable. The independent, or X variable, is charted on the horizontal axis, and the independent variable, or Y, is charted on the vertical axis. Francis Galton and Carl Pearson developed the concepts of correlation and regression. Both men were devoted to laying the mathematical and statistical foundation for Darwin's theory of evolution. In 1901, Galton, Pearson, and biologist Raphael Weldon founded Biometrica, a statistics journal intended to promote the use of statistical methods in biological sciences. Francis Galton coined the term correlation in the 1880s. He used R to represent the correlation coefficient in a sample. Correlation in a population is symbolized by the Greek letter rho. Galton invented the least squares line, which is also known as the regression line. The least squares line or regression line is the line that makes the vertical distance from the data points to the regression line as small as possible. From 1893 to 1904, Carl Pearson wrote a series of papers that developed and refined many statistical techniques, 
including correlation and regression, as well as standard deviation and chi-square. The coefficient of correlation is also known as Pearson's Product Moment Coefficient of Correlation, PMCC. Carl Pearson, Galton's protege, was chair of the University of London's Department of Eugenics. This chair was funded by Galton's estate. Scores for the coefficient of correlation range from negative 1 to positive 1. Correlation is a unit-free standardized effect size. Unit-free means that comparisons of correlation coefficients can be made regardless of how the data are measured. The coefficient of correlation rho may be reported as an absolute value, no negative sign, when estimating statistical power. The image of effect size absolute value rho in this screen is taken from G power. Formulas for rho and r. For the population rho, the coefficient of correlation equals the sum of x, the random independent variables, minus the population mean for the independent variables, times y, the random dependent variable, minus the population mean for the dependent variable, over the population standard deviation for the independent variables, times the population standard deviation for the dependent variables. For a sample, r, the coefficient of correlation, equals the sum of x, the random independent variables, minus the sample mean for the independent variables, times y, the random dependent variables, minus the sample mean for the dependent variables, over the number of match pairs minus 1, times the sample standard deviation for the independent variables, times the sample standard deviation for the dependent variables. Interpreting correlation coefficient effect size scores. This table shows how to interpret R scores. No correlation is an R score between negative 0.099 up to positive 0.099. Small correlations are between negative 0.10 to negative 0.299 or between 0.10 to 0.299. Medium correlations are between negative 0.30 to negative 0.499 or between 0.30 to 0.499. Large correlations are between negative 0.50 to negative 1 or between 0.50 to 1. With perfect correlations, all XY measures fall on the least squares or regression line. The chart on the left is a perfect positive correlation between temperature measured on a Fahrenheit scale and temperature measured on a Celsius scale. The chart on the right is a perfect negative or inverse correlation between speed and travel time. Perfect correlations are extremely rare. The two correlations shown violate a key assumption for correlations. The variables are not independent. Zero correlation means that there is no relationship between the independent and dependent variables. Here is a strong positive correlation. As the independent variable x on the horizontal axis increases, the dependent variable y on the vertical axis goes up. An R score of positive 0.90 is a very strong correlation. The xy measures are very close to the least squares line. Here is a small positive correlation. As the independent variable x on the horizontal axis increases, the dependent variable y on the vertical axis goes up. An R score of positive 0.24 is a small correlation. The xy variables are more dispersed from the least squares line compared to the strong positive correlation. Here is a strong negative or inverse correlation. As the x variable on the horizontal axis increases, the y variable on the vertical axis goes down. An R score of negative 0.90 is a very strong inverse correlation. The xy measures are very close to the least squares line. Here is a weak negative correlation. As the x variable on the horizontal axis increases, the y variable on the vertical axis goes down. An R score of negative 24 is a small correlation. 
the xy measures are more dispersed from the least squared line compared to the strong negative correlation. Key points about the coefficient of correlation. This measure is time consuming to calculate by hand. More about this later. It is assumed the relationship between the independent and dependent variables is linear. If the relationship is not linear, the independent or dependent variables must be transformed. Transforming variables will not be covered in this lecture. Outliers can distort the value of the correlation coefficient. To repeat, linear regression models how well the independent or explanatory variable x predicts the dependent or response variable y. The relationship of the independent variable x and the dependent variable y is fitted to the least squares line. Deviations of the xy measures from this line are called residuals. Residuals are errors that the regression model does not explain. The goal of linear regression is to explain the variation of the dependent variable y based on changes in the independent variable x. Regression is a late 19th century term. Better terms would be bivariate analysis or two-variable analysis. Predictive analysis would also be a better term, as would predictive models. Linear regression models are very simple. One predictive variable and one response variable. Caveat, all models are wrong. As George E. P. Box and Norman P. Draper wrote, remember that all models are wrong. The practical question is how wrong do they have to be not to be useful? The message that all models are wrong is so important that Box and Draper repeated it at the end of their book when they wrote, essentially, all models are wrong, but some are useful. To repeat, correlation measures the degree of association between the independent variable x and the dependent variable y. Regression predicts changes in the dependent variable y based on changes in the independent variable x. There are four critical steps in correlation regression analysis. Step one, calculate the coefficient of correlation. Step two, calculate the coefficient of determination, r squared. Step three, conduct a null hypothesis significance test to determine whether there is a correlation in the population. Important, do not ignore an a priori power analysis. Step four, conduct a linear regression analysis. Correlation example. Is an NBA basketball player's height associated with his number of rebounds per game? What is a rebound? A player who retrieves the ball after a missed field goal or foul shot is credited with a rebound. Rebounds are important because a team that scores a rebound keeps possession of the ball. Linear regression would predict average rebounds per game based on a player's height. Sample data of 30 NBA players was randomly selected from current team rosters. Players' heights range from 73 inches, 6 feet 1, to 84 inches, 7 feet. The sample data for the 2019-20 season was sourced on December 12, 2019 from the National Basketball Association's website. Are players' heights the independent variable x or the dependent variable y? Players' heights are the independent or predictor variable x because players' heights predict rebounds. Rebounds, therefore, are the dependent or response variable y. Here is a scattergram showing the xy measures of players' heights, the independent variable, and average rebounds per game, the dependent variable. While the least squares line has not been drawn, it is clear from the distribution of dots that as players' heights increase, so do rebounds per game. To repeat, the coefficient of correlation measures the strength and direction of a linear relationship between the independent and dependent variables. Here again is the formula for calculating the coefficient of correlation, or r. The coefficient of correlation can be calculated by hand in six steps. Step 1. 
Count the number of paired observations, or n. Step two, calculate the mean of the independent variable, x bar, and the mean of the dependent variable, y bar. Step three, calculate the sample standard deviation of the independent variable, s sub x, and the sample standard deviation of the dependent variable, s sub y. Step four, find the deviations of the independent variables from the sample mean for the independent variables, and the deviations from the dependent variables from the sample mean for the dependent variables. Then multiply x minus x bar and y minus y bar for each of the random variables. Step five, find the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar. Step six, complete the formula. The sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar over n minus 1 times s sub x times s sub y. The coefficient of correlation r equals 0 0.7182 or 71.82%. This is a very strong correlation between a player's height and average rebounds per game. Performing these humdrum calculations takes a lot of time. Using a computer can save a lot of time. Over a hundred years ago, Carl Pearson and other scientists used computers, intelligent women. The use of women as computers continued into the 1970s. Here is what one historian of science wrote about women's roles in science a hundred years ago. In the history of computing, the humbler levels of scientific work were open, even welcoming to women. Indeed, by the early 20th century, computing was thought of as women's work and computers were assumed to be female. Respected mathematicians would blithely approximate the problem-solving horsepower of computing machines in girl years and describing a unit of machine labor as equal to one kilo girl. Today, you probably could not hire teams of intelligent women to do mundane calculations. Use Microsoft Excel to get some exploitation-free kilo girls. Excel saves time. Calculating the coefficient of correlation by hand can take more than 20 minutes, but using Excel can take less than 20 seconds. Excel's Corel function has two arguments. The first is the range of cells with the independent variable. The second is the range of cells with the dependent variable. Excel has an older function called Pearson. Corel and Pearson both calculate the coefficient of correlation, but the Pearson function may be subject to rounding errors. With both functions, the independent and dependent variables must have the same number of observations. Both functions ignore text and logical values. For our example, the Corel function is in cell E1, equal sign, C-O-R-R-E-L, open parentheses, B2 colon B31 comma, C2 colon C31, close parentheses. The answer is 0.7182 or 71.82%. What does a coefficient of correlation of 71.82% mean? This is a large positive correlation. As a player's height increases, his average rebounds goes up. This is not a perfect correlation. Other unstated factors are associated with the player's rebound average. Excel's data analysis tool can also calculate the coefficient of correlation. This is done in four steps. Step one, click on the data analysis icon on Excel's ribbon. Step two, in the data analysis window, scroll down to correlation. Select this analysis and click OK. Step three, enter the inputs. Enter the input range by selecting the cells that contain the data. Select group by columns. Check the labels in first row box. Select the output option and click OK. Step four, read the results. 0 0.7181506 rounds off to 0 0.7182. Please note, using Excel's correlation tool is not faster than using the Corel function. The coefficient of determination, or R squared, indicates how much of the variation in the dependent variable 
is explained by the independent variable. The coefficient of determination, r squared, is very easy to calculate once the coefficient of correlation is found. The coefficient of correlation squared equals 0 0.5158, or 51.58%. The coefficient of determination measures the percent of variation in the dependent variable, explained by variation in the independent variable. Terms like small, medium, and large used with the coefficient of correlation lack precision. The coefficient of determination is a more precise measure of effect size than the coefficient of correlation. Excel's RSQ function calculates the coefficient of determination. This function has two arguments, one, the dependent variable, and two, the independent variable. The RSQ function is not much faster than using a handheld calculator once the coefficient of correlation is found, but Excel's calculation is more accurate because it calculates values to 15 digits past the decimal point. Cell D2 shows the calculations of the coefficient of determination for example. The coefficient of determination is 0.5158 or 51.58%. What does a 51.58% coefficient of determination mean? A player's height explains 51.58% of the changes in his per game rebound average. 48.42% of a player's rebound average is explained by unknown factors found by 1 minus 0.5158. Height is the most important predictor of rebounds because it explains more than half the variation in the dependent variable, but it is not a perfect predictor. Let's move on to testing the correlation with the null hypothesis significance test. Using the absolute value of the coefficient of correlation, 0 0.7128, 80% statistical power could have been achieved with only 10 matched pairs. To repeat, the population correlation is symbolized by the Greek letter rho. Here is the research question for this test. Is there a correlation in the population, or is the population correlation rho not equal to zero? This is a two-tailed test. In other words, could the sample correlation be due to sampling error? After the research question has been stated, and the significance level selected, follow these steps. State the null hypothesis. Rho equals zero. There is not a correlation in the population. The alternate hypothesis. Rho does not equal zero. There is a correlation in the population. If the test statistic is in the right tail, there is a positive correlation. If the test statistic is in the left tail, there is a negative correlation. Compose the decision rule. First select the significance level, 0 0.05 or 5%. Find the critical value of t. Degrees of freedom equals the sample size n minus 2. There are 28 degrees of freedom found by 30 minus 2. Remember, these tests are always two-tailed tests. The critical values for t are negative 2.048, and positive 2.048. The decision rule, reject the null hypothesis if t is less than negative 2.048 or greater than positive 2.048. Here is the formula for the test statistic t. In the numerator, r times the square root of n minus 2, where n is the sample size. In the denominator, the square root of 1 minus r squared. The test statistic calculations. The value of the test statistic is 5.461. This is a very extreme t value. This test is not included in Excel's data analysis tool pack. The p value equals 0 0.000001 or 0.001%. There is just a 1 in 100,000 chance that this result is merely sampling error. Report tiny p-values like this 
as less than 0.001. Conclusion. There is very strong evidence against the null hypothesis, given the extremely low p-value. There is a large correlation in the population between a player's height and his average rebounds per game. The probability of a type 2 error is low given the high statistical power. There are four caveats about the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination. 1. The coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination are measures of association, not causation. 2. These measures describe the strength of the linear relationship between the independent variable x and the dependent variable y. 3. High coefficients of correlation and determination do not necessarily mean that the independent variable is a useful predictor of the dependent variable. 4. To determine how well x predicts y, we must conduct a regression analysis. Let's turn to the relationship between correlation and causation. For over 120 years, statisticians have warned that correlation is not causation. As statistician Edward Tufte wrote, correlation is not causation, but it is sure a hint. Correlation measures an association. Correlation is necessary but not sufficient to prove causation. Correlation by itself does not prove causation. Correlation and causal relationships are different. There is a strong correlation between a rooster's cock-a-doodle-doo and sunrise, but no reasonable person believes that a rooster's crowing causes the sun to rise. Ice cream sales and forest fires are highly correlated. Both tend to peak in the summer but no one believes increased ice cream sales caused forest fires, or forest fires cause increased ice cream sales. Every statistics textbook cautions students that correlation does not imply causation. This is typically the only mention of causation in statistics textbooks. Both Carl Pearson and R.A. Fisher rarely mention causation. Fisher as we shall shortly see, strongly rejected the notion that smoking cigarettes causes lung cancer. Statisticians still are reluctant to discuss causation, yet some contemporary data scientists say causation must be studied. Judea Pearl, Madeline Glymore, and Nicholas Jewell wrote, We study causation because we need to make sense of data, to guide actions and policies, and to learn more about our successes and failures. We also need to know how and why causes influence their effects. Science, after all, has been focused on cause and effect for at least 400 years. As Francis Bacon wrote in the 16th century, human knowledge and human power meet in one, for where the cause is not known, the effect cannot be produced. Researchers today focus on causation. Here are just a few examples. Do statins lower LDL cholesterol and reduce the risk of heart disease? Does drinking Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola cause a person to gain weight? Will doubling a brand's advertising spending lead to higher sales? Do mosquitoes spread the West Nile virus? Does reducing taxes on corporations and billionaires increase the national debt? Do vaccines cause autism? There are two important aspects of causation. One, the cause must precede the effect, and two, there must be a concomitant variation between the cause and effect, which is to say a change in the cause leads to a change in the effect. Causation is not deterministic. Not all smokers will get lung cancer. Non-smokers also get lung cancer, but at a much lower rate than smokers. Causation is probabilistic. Causation means that Y is more likely to occur when X has happened. When considering causal relationships, confounding variables and spurious correlations must be ruled out.
confounding variables and spurious correlations will be explained shortly. Here are three examples of causal statements. One, smoking causes seven out of 10 lung cancers. Two, switching to an insulin pump will contribute to reducing type one diabetics A1C scores to below 7%. Three, when Coca-Cola reduces the price of Diet Coke by 20%, dollar sales increase by 30%. Proving causation is very complicated. Causation is established using random control tests and large observational studies. Random control tests are the gold standard for proving causation. With random control tests, subjects are randomly assigned to either the control group or treatment groups. Subjects should not know whether they are in a treatment or a control group. The treatment group gets the treatment while the control group gets a placebo. A placebo is something that has no effect. The researchers should not know which group the subjects have been assigned. Double blind tests are tests when neither the subjects nor the researchers know who is in the treatment and control groups. The only difference between the treatment and control groups should be the treatment. Those analyzing the data should not know whether the groups are part of the control or treatment. The results should be reproducible, which is to say, reliable. A long-term ethical randomized control test to establish a causal link between smoking and cancer is impossible and unethical. Here is why. Such a test would start with the population of 18-year-olds. From this group, a random sample would be taken. Subjects would be randomly assigned to either a treatment group or control group. Those in the treatment group would be required to smoke for 40 years. Those in the control group would be forbidden from smoking. After 40 years, the cancer rates for the treatment and control groups would be compared, and these results would need to be replicated. Such long-term test has serious ethical implications. Institutional research boards, the groups that are formally designated to review and monitor biomedical research involving human subjects to ensure the subjects are not harmed, would not approve of such research. Fisher strongly and repeatedly attacked the notion that smoking causes cancer. In 1957, the British Medical Journal called for a broad publicity campaign to alert the public to the link between cigarettes and cancer. Fisher's response, we have seen how unscrupulously the modern device of publicity are liable to be used under the impulsion of fear. And surely the yellow pearl of modern times is not the mild and soothing weed, but the organized creation of a state of frantic alarm. Fisher on the ethics of random control tests to establish the link between smoking and cancer. But the most difficult field for the application of these principles has always been the medical field. No one feels, and especially a medical man could feel, that it is right to do things to a human being which probably would do him harm. Consequently, deliberate experimentation has not been widely used in the medical field. Let's turn to causality and observational studies. In the 1950s, Austin Bradford Hill and Richard Dahl conducted observational research involving millions of subjects that confirmed a causal link between smoking and lung cancer. In the 1960s, Hill articulated nine criteria to prove causality in epidemiology. 1. Strength of the effect. Small effects do not mean that there is not a causal effect, though the larger the effect, the more likely there is a causal effect. 2. Reproducibility. Consistent findings observed by different researchers in different places with different samples strengthen the likelihood of a causal effect. This is what researchers mean by reliability. 3. Specificity. Causation is likely when there is a very specific population at a specific site with the disease with no other likely explanation. Four, temporality. The effect must occur after the cause. Five, dose responsiveness. 
greater exposure should generally lead to greater incidence of the effect, and the effect reduces upon reduction of exposure. 6. Plausibility. Biological, chemical, or mechanical evidence must suggest a causal chain. 7. Coherence. The effect fits with established knowledge. 8. Experiment. The effect can be replicated with experiments. 9. Analogy. There should be similarities between observed associations. Here is what David Spiegelhalter, past president of the Royal Statistics Society, says about causation. Statisticians are generally reluctant to attribute causation unless there has been an experiment, although computer scientists Judea Pearl and others have made progress in setting out the principles of building causal regression models from observational data. In the book of Why, Judea Pearl and Dana McKenzie developed the calculus of causation based on two languages. One, causal diagrams to express what we know. Two, symbolic language to express what we want to know. Let's turn to spurious or false correlations. Spurious correlations are two or more events that are mathematically related by coincidence or confounding lurking variables. Here is a good definition of spurious correlations. It is possible to obtain a significant value for a coefficient of correlation when in reality the two functions are absolutely unrelated. Spurious correlations can be dangerous when they are assumed to imply a causal relationship. Here is a dangerous spurious correlation. Childhood vaccinations cause autism. In 1998, a preliminary study published in Lancet suggested a causal link between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and autism. This study was so fraught with problems that Lancet eventually retracted the article. Here is how this retracted study appears on the internet today. The BMJ, a peer-reviewed publication published by the British Medical Association, ran an article on why linking the measles, mump, rubella vaccine to autism was fraudulent. Because of the anti-vaccination paranoia, there have been more measles outbreaks due to the increased number of unvaccinated children. Is autism increasing? There is no clear answer because the definition of autism has changed. Autism Speaks Incorporated, the largest American autism advocacy group, states that the MMR vaccine does not cause autism. This spurious correlation has been spread by anti-vaccine celebrities. Here are just a few famous anti-vaxxers. Actress, model, and television personality Jenna McCarthy. Comedian Rob Schneider. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., son of Senator Robert F. Kennedy and nephew of President Kennedy, and actress Jennifer Beale. Here is a more lighthearted example of a spurious correlation. Ice cream sales and the number of lifeguard rescues. As ice cream sales on the beach go up, the number of lifeguard rescues go up. Do increased ice cream sales cause people to drown? No. There is a confounding or lurking variable that explains ice cream sales and the number of lifeguard rescues. The lurking variable, hot summer weather. Hot summer weather is associated with ice cream sales and lifeguard rescues. Ice cream sales, however, does not cause people to drown and necessitate lifeguard rescues. Another spurious correlation, number of donkeys and number of professors. As the number of donkeys declines, the number of professors increases. Does the decline in the donkey population cause an increase in the number of professors? Or are donkeys turning into professors? There is a confounding variable that explains the decrease in the number of donkeys and the increase in the number of professors. Industrialization is the confounding variable. With industrialization, there is less need for donkeys as beasts of burden and a greater need for professors. Here are some famous spurious correlations. Spurious correlations vastly outnumber genuine correlations. 
early 20th century statistician Udni Yule's example of a spurious correlation was an increase in imported apples into the United Kingdom and the rise of the UK divorce rate. R.A. Fisher cited this example in his critique of Hill and Dahl. The number of storks nesting on Danish roofs is associated with the number of children born in those homes. This is the source of the old tale that storks deliver babies. Women's hemlines and the stock market. This is a belief that the fashional length of a woman's hemline is associated with the performance of the stock market. Tyler Vegan has collected funny spurious correlations in his book and on his website. Here are four funny spurious correlations. One, per capita cheese consumption and the number of people who died by becoming entangled in bed sheets are equal 0 0.9471. Two, the divorce rate in Maine and per capita consumption of margarine in the United States R equals 0 0.9926. 3. The age of Miss America and the number of murders by steam, hot vapors, and hot objects. R equals 0 0.8701. 4. The divorce rate in Kentucky and the people who drowned by falling out of fishing boats. R equals 0 0.9524. Let's turn to an example of regression using the data on basketball players' heights and average rebounds per game. The regression model is a mathematical formula representing the linear relationship between x and y. It is used to estimate the value of y based on x. Regression is based on the least squares line, which is also known as the regression line. Regression minimizes the sum of the squares of the vertical distance between the actual y value and the predicted y value, or y hat. There are five key assumptions for linear regression. One, for each independent variable x, there is a dependent variable y. The value of the dependent variable y is independent of the value of the independent variable x. Three, the dependent variable y is normally distributed. Four, the mean of the y variables is on the regression line. Five, the standard error of the estimate, or SEE, is the best estimate of a common standard deviation of y. What is the least squares line? It is the best fit line that makes the vertical distance between each data point as small as possible. It minimizes the deviations, or sum of the squared errors. Here's how to draw the least squares line. Step 1, draw a scattergram. If your data is not linear, the data will have to be transformed, or a more sophisticated analysis may have to be conducted. Here is how to draw a scattergram and least squared line in Excel. 1. Select the x and y variables on the Excel worksheet. 2. 2. Select Insert Chart command and select Scatter Chart without lines. Under Add Chart Elements, add a linear trend line. This is the least squares line. Your scattergram with the least squares line is ready to be formatted. Here is a formatted scattergram and least squares line. There are three critical equations in linear regression. The first is the slope of the least squares line, or b. b equals r times the standard deviation of the dependent variable s sub y over standard deviation of the independent variable s sub x. The second equation is the y-intercept, or a. a equals the mean of the dependent variable minus the slope of the least squares line times the mean of the independent variable. The third equation is the regression equation, or y-hat. y-hat equals the slope of the least squares line times the random dependent variable x plus the y-intercept. Slope, or b, is the rate the least squares line rises or falls when covering horizontal distance. An increase in the independent variable x equals an increase or decrease in the dependent variable y. Y-intercept, or a, is the point where the least squares line intersects with the vertical or y-axis. 
calculating regression in three steps. The first step is to calculate the slope of the least squares line, B. The slope of the least squares line equals 0 0.6631, which means that as a player's height increases an inch, his average rebounds per game increase by 0 0.6331 rebounds. Excel's slope function will calculate the slope of the least squares line. The slope function has two arguments. The first is the range of cells for the dependent variable, or y. The second is the range of cells with the independent variable, or x. Cell C4 shows the slope of the line. The second step is to calculate the y-intercept, or a. The y-intercept is negative 44.95. A negative y-intercept has no practical meaning. Excel's intercept function will calculate the y-intercept of the least square line. The intercept function has two arguments. The first is the range of cells with the dependent or y variable. The second is the range of cells with the independent or x variable. The y-intercept is shown in cell C8. The third step is to calculate the predicted value of the dependent variable, or y-hat. A player who is 80 inches tall is expected to have 5.7 average rebounds per game. A player who is 74 inches tall is expected to have 1.9 average rebounds per game. Excel's trend function calculates the predicted values of the dependent variable, or y-hat. The trend function has four arguments. The first is the y-array, which is the array of dependent or y variables. The second is the x-array, which is the array of independent or x variables. The third is nu x. This argument is the independent variable or x used to predict the dependent or y variable. This argument is optional. The fourth is CONST or constant. If this argument is blank or true, the slope of the least squared line is normally distributed. If it is false, the slope is set at zero. This screenshot from Excel shows the predicted y values, or y hat, calculated using the trend function. Note only the first two arguments were used. y hat, along with the independent variable x, provide the coordinates for the least squares line. Residuals equal the dependent variable minus the predicted dependent variable, or y hat. Residuals are the errors in the prediction of the dependent variable y. Residuals are the difference between the predicted value y hat and the observed value of y. Residuals are the portion of the dependent variable that the regression model does not explain. The standard error of the estimate is the standard deviation of the residuals. The lower the standard error of the estimate, the stronger the relationship between x and y, and the better the model is at predicting the dependent variable. Here is the equation for the standard error of the estimate. SEE equals the sum of the square root of the sum of the dependent variable y minus the predicted y variable or y hat squared over n minus 2. The standard error of the estimate is 2.10. Excel's STEYX function calculates the standard error of the estimate for the regression line. STEYX stands for the standard error of y given x. The STEYX function has two arguments. The first is the range of cells for the dependent variable y. The second is the range of cells for the independent variable x. There is a null hypothesis significance test for the slope of the regression line. The research question, is the slope of the regression line different from zero? If the slope of the regression line is different from zero, the regression equation predicts y based on x. If the slope of the regression line is not different from zero, the regression equation does not predict y based on x. Null and alternate hypotheses. The slope of the line in a sample equals b. The slope of the regression line in a population is symbolized as beta. 
do not confuse this beta with the type 2 error symbol. Here are the null and alternate hypotheses. Null hypothesis, beta equals 0. Alternate hypothesis, beta does not equal 0. The null hypothesis means that there is not a statistically significant slope in the regression line. This means that the independent variable x does not predict the dependent variable y. The alternate hypothesis means that there is a statistically significant slope in the regression line. This means that the independent variable x predicts the dependent variable y. The critical value of the t-test statistic. With a 5% significance level and 28 degrees of freedom, the critical values for t are negative 2.048 and positive 2.048. Decision rule. Reject the null hypothesis if t is less than negative 2.048 or greater than positive 2.048. The test statistic for the slope of the line is done in two steps. The first step is to calculate the standard error of the estimated slope based on sample data. S sub b, the standard error of the estimated slope based on sample data, is found by the standard error of the estimate, 2.10, over the standard deviation of the independent variable x, 3.36, over the square root of n minus 1. S sub b equals... 0.12. The second step is to calculate the test statistic. The estimates of the slope of the least squares line based on sample data, 0.6631 over S sub B, 0.12. The value of the test statistic is 5.461, which is a very large positive correlation. Here is the calculation of the slope of the line hypothesis test done in Excel. With a t-value as high as 5.461 and a p-value less than 0.001, the null hypothesis is rejected. Conclusion, the independent variable predicts the dependent variable. The regression equation predicts the mean value for the dependent variable y given the independent variable x. Confidence intervals provide the margin of error for the predicted y variables or y hat. Here is the confidence interval formula for the predicted values of the dependent variable or y hat. y hat plus or minus the t value times the standard error of the estimate times the square root of 1 over n plus the x variable minus x bar squared over the sample size n minus the mean of the independent variable squared. This screenshot of an Excel worksheet shows the margin of error for y hat in column F. For the 82 inch player in row 3, there is a 95% probability of 7 rebounds plus or minus 1.17 rebounds per game. The lower confidence limit is 5.83 rebounds found by 7 minus 1.17. The upper confidence limit is 8.17 rebounds, found by 7 plus 1.17. There are also prediction intervals for y hat. Prediction intervals are the likely value for a future observation. Prediction intervals are wider than confidence intervals. Prediction intervals allow for random errors associated with future observations. Here is the formula for prediction intervals. The prediction interval is y plus or minus the test statistic times the standard error of the estimate times the square root of 1 plus 1 over n plus x minus the mean for the independent variable squared over the sum of the random variables x minus the mean of the independent variable squared. The prediction intervals are in column f of the screenshot. For the 82-inch tall player in row 3, there is a 95% probability of 7.0 plus or minus 4.55 rebounds per game. The lower limit of the prediction interval equals 2.45 rebounds, found by 7 minus 4.55 rebounds. The upper limit of the prediction interval equals 11.55 rebounds, found by 7.0 plus 4.55 rebounds. 
Excel's analysis tool pack can run a variety of regression analyses very quickly. Excel's regression tool is very useful. Executing the regression tool has three basic steps. Step one, click on the data analysis icon on Excel's data ribbon. Step two, click on the regression tool in the data analysis window. Step three, enter the inputs. Enter the input Y range, the Y array. Enter the input X range, the X array. Check labels and confidence intervals. Select a 95% confidence level. Select an output option. Check residuals. Check normal probability plots. Click on the OK button and Excel will quickly calculate the regression statistics. Excel's regression analyses include t-test and f-test to determine whether the independent variable x is a significant predictor of the dependent variable y. Excel calculates the predicted value of y, y hat, and residuals. Step four, interpret the results. Multiple r is the coefficient of correlation. r equals 0 0.7185. Ignore the word multiple. This is for multiple regression. R squared is the coefficient of determination and equals 0 0.5158. Observations is the number of match pairs. It equals 30. This tool can be used for multiple regression. Ignore the word multiple, the adjusted R square, and the standard error. Excel includes an ANOVA table, which tests whether the slope of the regression line beta equals 0. The ANOVA table shows the relationship between the standard error of the estimate, or SSE, and the coefficient of determination, R squared. Here are the hypotheses for the ANOVA test. The null hypothesis, beta equals 0. This means the independent variable X does not predict the dependent variable Y. The alternate hypothesis, beta does not equal 0. This means the independent variable X predicts the dependent variable y. Here is the ANOVA table. The F statistic is extremely high, 29.828. The p-value is significance F and is very low, less than 0.001. Conclusion, reject the null hypothesis. The slope of the regression line in the population is not zero. The independent variable predicts the dependent variable. Excel also conducts a t-test on whether the slope of the regression line, beta, is significant. The hypotheses. The null hypothesis, beta equals zero. This means the independent variable does not predict the dependent variable. Alternate hypothesis, beta does not equal zero. This means the independent variable predicts the dependent variable. This is a test of the significance of the model slope of the line beta. Height, the independent variable x has a coefficient of 0 0.6331. The test statistic for this test is 5.461 and the p-value is less than 0 0.001. Conclusion, reject the null hypothesis. The independent variable x predicts the dependent variable y. Excel also conducts a t-test for the y-intercept. This test also has significant results. As shown on the screenshot on the right, Excel reports residuals. The predicted rebounds, p hat, and the residuals, which are the independent variable minus the predicted variable. Excel draws the normal probability plot, as shown on the right side of the screen. The distribution of residuals should approximate a normal distribution, which this one does because the dots are arranged nearly in a straight line. Beware, extrapolation is risky. Extrapolation is using a regression model to predict y, the dependent variable, for values of the independent variable x that are not included in the model. Our model can only predict rebounds for players between 73 inches and 82 inches tall. It cannot predict rebounds for a player who is 72 inches tall or 83 inches tall. Conclusion Correlation describes the strength of an association between an independent and dependent variable. The independent and dependent variable are quantitative. 
The coefficient of correlation is an effect size between negative 1 and positive 1. As the value of the correlation coefficient becomes more extreme, the strength of the correlation increases. The coefficient of determination measures the proportion of variance in the dependent variable predicted by variance in the independent variable. A t-test can test inferences about a correlation in the population. Regression models the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable. Regression is based on the least squares line that minimizes the sum of the squares between the actual and predicted dependent variables. All regression models are wrong, but some are useful. The standard error of the estimate is a measure of errors in the model. The significance of the slope of the least squared line can be tested to determine whether the independent variable predicts the dependent variable. Confidence and prediction intervals of the dependent variable can be constructed to measure the range of errors. Let's briefly identify more advanced regression methods. Multiple regression is based on multiple independent variables and one quantitative dependent variable. There are non-parametric techniques like Spearman's Row and Kendall's Taw that assess statistical associations based on the ranks of data. Logistic regression is the analysis of multiple independent variables and a categorical or qualitative dependent variable. Multinominal logistic regression is logistic regression for problems with two or more possible discrete outcomes. Polynominal regression models nonlinear data. Structural equation modeling is a multivariate statistical analysis technique used to analyze structural relationships. Except where otherwise noted, clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access clear-sighted statistics for free along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.